This video will offer a new way of thinking about the twin paradox that puts the stress on what is actually experienced by the traveling twin. I'm going to be putting together a few things posted under the twin paradox talk page on the Wikipedia and try to move forward on a project suggested by user W. Woods. I will begin by noting that under twin paradox on Wikipedia there is an article and a talk page. Under the talk page, there is an, a list of talk archives. I'm going to begin by going to talk archive number 12. And you'll find this note from W. Wood saying, nobody picked up on it, but I proposed a diagram like this a few, a few months ago, showing the events in all three reference frames. Now the original diagram he proposed can be found by clicking here on the diagram that is shown, then clicking on details, then on the file history, and finally on the prior version of the file. Now, if you're curious about how W. Woods calculated the coordinates of these events, you might notice the highlighted words here, I proposed, and click on them. X1 and T1, it says here, represent the coordinates of these events in the rest frame of the stay-at-home twin with origin at O. T is the time the traveling twin takes to reach turnover in the stay-at-home twin's rest frame. I will mark that time T here on the diagram showing the Earth rest frame. V is the speed of the traveling twin. This will be the inverse of the slope of the red line OE here. O is the event at which the traveling twin leaves the stay-at-home twin. This is this point over here. E is the event at which the traveling twin reverses courses and D is the event where the traveling twin arrives home. A, B, and C are the events which are simultaneous with the traveling twin's arrival, stop, and departure from the turnaround event. They will all be simultaneous with the event E, the turnaround event, at some point during the turnaround. Now let's ask this question of why, generally, these four sets of coordinates generated only three diagrams. W. Woods explains here that he has two rest frames of the traveling twin, one of them from with an origin at O, and the other translated so that the coordinate of E are the same as in frame number two. In other words, he skipped showing the third set of coordinates, showing only the first, second, and fourth set of coordinates in the diagram. If he had shown the third set of coordinates, it would have shown exactly the same shape as the third diagram here, but with everything shifted up and to the right with the O at the origin. I've been discussing this topic on Quora with Eric Anson, who has a PhD in physics and has taught about Lorentz transformation. Eric has suggested the idea that there should be a rest frame for the traveling twin. While I think of the words non-inertial and rest as being opposite, Eric has assured me that both Max Born and Albert Einstein used this idea before him, the idea of a non-inertial rest frame. In the spirit of showing this, the idea of this non-inertial rest frame, I'm going to simply take these diagrams from W. Woods and begin to erase parts of each frame that are not in the traveling twin's non-inertial rest frame. So we will be using all of the events which happen during the outbound trip and all of the events which happen during the inbound trip, and we should also use all of the events that are actually happening during the acceleration. So while the Earth is moving away from the traveling twin, it will move out to its Lorentz contracted distance to point event A. Then, during the acceleration, the Earth will pop out to its full uncontracted distance. And then, the Earth will pop back to its contracted distance. And so the whole path of the Earth would look something like this to the traveling twin. By the way, I'm putting look in air quotes here. 
what we have is an accurate representation of event of the coordinates of events that are happening on Earth during the Traveling Twins trip. But the word during is a loaded word in special in special relativity. If we want to know what things actually look like to the traveling twin, it implies that we're asking what he actually sees. Everyone should agree that these are the coordinates of events that happen during the traveling twin's journey, but no one should claim that this is what the traveling twin actually sees. In all of these diagrams, this dotted line represents the speed of light traveling to the right. By moving this dotted line around, I can show where photons from the Earth strike the traveling twin's eyes, and this represent w represents what the traveling twin literally sees at any given moment. In all three of these diagrams, the entire journey of the Earth is se seen continuously between event O and event D. Every event is observed exactly once. Every event that happens on Earth is observed consecutively by the traveling twin. However, if we look at this non-inertial rest frame we constructed, this does not have that property. If I show where the traveling twin moves between, sees the events from O to A, A to B, and B to C, and then from C to D, we can see some discontinuities in the Earth's motion. For instance, if this were a good representation of an inertial reference frame, for instance, it stands to reason that here, the traveling twin should actually see three images of the Earth. One image from the Earth going along path A to B, one going along path B to C, and one as it goes from along path C to D. Now, if you want to call me out on this, you may feel free to do so. I am deliberately abusing this construction. We already defined events A to B to C to be simultaneous with event E. The coordinates of those events were valid during the turnaround, but they are no longer valid between, the tr between event E and D on the return trip. Now let's come back to the three representations of the true inertial rest frames. We can see that in these diagrams, the events A, B, and C are all actually seen by the traveling twin while he is on his return journey. In fact, let's define another event, F, here. We'll make it an extended event, say, for instance, the Earth begins broadcasting a 172-hour marathon of Star Trek Voyager. This is uh, been carefully selected here because in that show, the crew of the Voyager suddenly finds themselves much further away from home than they expected, and that is also what is about to happen here. I'm going to do something here that is really similar to what I did earlier in this video, which is to construct a non-inertial reference frame, a non-inertial rest frame for the traveling twin, but this time instead of erasing events above and below the line of simultaneity for point E, I'm going to be erasing the lines above and below the line EF. I'll take these events that can be seen during the inbound trip and move them so that the turnaround event is at the same place. Then I'll take this observation made while the traveling twin was momentarily co-moving with the Earth and put it in into position so that the event E lines up with the other two. Okay, so this looks pretty sloppy, but at least I can put a white background behind it. Now you can see that during the turnaround, that 172-hour marathon broadcast of Star Trek Voyager is receding from this point F to this point F to this point F. So let's put these two diagrams side by side and compare them. 
Both diagrams aspire to do the same thing, to represent the non-inertial reference so-called rest frame of the traveling twin. The diagram on the right contains all of the events from O to F down the F line and from A to B, A, B, C, correctly represents their coordinates where they are actually seen by the traveling twin instead of where they were during the observations of the traveling twin. The diagram on the left shows where the Earth is during every event that happens to the traveling twin. Now it should be noted that the Lorentz transformation equations in special relativity has always been a theory about preserving the speed of light, not a theory about preserving our concept of, special, of simultaneity. So while both of these methods of creating a non-inertial so-called rest frame for the traveling twin, both of them do that, create that reference rest frame, I strongly feel that the version on the right is better for demonstrating the twin paradox and the resolving the issues behind the twin paradox. I hope you found this video entertaining and useful. If you did, please like, share, and comment. If you think you have found a significant problem with my ideas, please also, also please comment. Thank you so much for watching and ta-ta for now.